Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I'm always excited when I have a new freebie to share with you guys. So that also means I have a new paper kit that I've made and I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna really flip through it too much, but um, we're gonna make some things and show you some of the things that I've made using this new paper kit. Um, and as always, I have my freebie um, hosted on the Buy Me A Coffee website. And this is the one that coordinates um, with the Aqua Blue kit. I know, I need to come up with better names for my kits. It's really hard. If you guys have suggestions, let me know. Um, but this one is all different shades of blue and fun patterns. And I think you guys are going to be excited when you see the birds in this one. So the freebie is six. And I believe I made these three-inch squares. No. What are they? Um... It looks like it's like a two and three quarter inch, maybe. Anyway, a square of six of the patterns, but there's more than that in the kit. And then a strip of one of the patterns. So anyway, that's the freebie. You can grab it on Buy Me A Coffee. The link will be in the description. And then the paper kit is available on Etsy. And it is a 16-page kit. Um, lots of full, pa full pages of patterns. This one is all cut up. I haven't reprinted it. But a few of the pages are split like that or have maybe a border. Some are solid of the pattern, okay? So there's just a variety. I think they're really pretty, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing with them. And then this kit also has some different bird images. So a sheet with some fussy cuts and some squares, and then a sheet that has some jumbo size tags, with birds, um, a sheet of bookmarks. I think there's four bookmarks um, with some pretty bird and collaged images. Okay, on um, those, aren't they cute? And um, a sheet of kind of, there are the different patterns, but um, without anything on them of tags. Let me see if I can find some of those. Some are, you know, the big patterns and then some I like that. So anyway, I'm going to just show you a few things I made, and we're going to make a few fun things. So I was just thinking uh, making um, some ephemera pieces um, would be nice. So I've made this library-style pocket and decorated it and put one of the jumbo tags right inside. I just used some things I had laying on my desk. And then if you haven't, I think most of you probably have grabbed my journaling words freebie, but... Um, I used a couple of the words from that. That's also awesome. buy me a coffee if you don't have that one yet. And I made these little tags. I put vintage buttons on a couple of them. And this one, I just um, put a piece of twine on there. And then I made this, it was just a hand folded envelope. It's supposed to be a square, but it's not a perfect square, but I just hand folded it and put a little closure. And then this one I was really happy with. And it's sort of like, you know, a one page wonder, I guess, because I used one sheet. Um, trimmed it a little bit, if I remember correctly, but it's got two pockets. I just haven't, haven't put anything inside yet. Um, but two pockets in this nice little wrap closure. And then what else did I make? I've been having fun playing with it today. And then I just made a, a large envelope with one of the sheets. Again, super simple envelope, hand folded. Um, oh, I did make this into like a tuck spot. I, I glued this in down, but put one of the little squares in there. And I think it turned out really cute. And I'm thinking this will be nice, um, you know, to tuck inside a journal with some nice paper. Um, you know, for some, some more writing or to put some ephemera pieces in. So that's what I've made so far. And um, so I just thought I would, with um, some of the papers I already have printed, we'd make a few things. So why don't I show you real quick how I made this folder. Um, it's an easy fold. Um, 
and it doesn't really matter which piece. I think it ended up looking cute because I did have that stripe, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it do it again, but we'll try. So what I did with this one is when you cut off the um, border, you know, that it always prints with, with the digitals, it ended up with a piece, let's see, it's a little more than 10 and a half and then it's eight. So 10, about 10 and a half by eight is the piece I'm starting with. And then I just kind of eyeballed, I remember what I did now, but I just kind of eyeballed, you know, how, how deep I wanted that pocket and you can adjust it. So this one is going to be almost the same size, maybe a half an inch taller. Um, but you know, if just decide how tall or how deep you want your pocket to be. This one is a two and a quarter inch pocket. So if you really do want to, you could score it on that eight inch side at two and a quarter, two and a half. That's probably what I did on that one. Just fold it over and make a nice crease. And then um, I again made a decision to just eyeball the fold here and we are going to cut a little section out here in a second um but i wanted it to be this one's like an inch and a quarter okay so i came over about an inch and a quarter and folded it and then i am going to cut out this section right here so we don't have quite so much bulk. And I know you probably can't see my fold lines, but I went just, just to the right of that. This one I'm trying to be right on that crease line so that hopefully it's not too short. And we'll save that and use it. Okay, and then for this piece, I am going to fold it in half up making sure you know this side is folded because I want that to come around like a little closure okay so easy right I just then sewed a button on which I'm not going to do on camera but then for the pocket of course if you want to go ahead and ink because it's easier to ink the pocket before you glue it down now, I did also, on the original one, you'll notice this one's wider. Yeah, again, by about a quarter of an inch. I actually brought this fold over further because then I also folded it over because I wanted to get that blue stripe was the pattern on the paper. I'm not doing that with this one. I'm not worried about it. But again, th this isn't supposed to be a project where you measure and you make it exactly the same each time. It's supposed to give you the idea of a fold and you can do it with any size paper you have. So again, you fold the pocket up, you decide how big of a piece you want to come over on your cover, and you're done. And again, I cut this section out just to help with bulk. And then you just glue the pockets. I hope y'all, I hope y'all followed me on that. I probably could have explained it a little bit better. Okay. Ugh. All right. There we go. And again, I liked the button closure. It's not necessary. You know, you can just have it fold over like this and it can tuck inside. You could use a ribbon closure. You could do a piece of Velcro if you wanted to. You could even, like I could cut one of these down and um, attach it and, and make this flap even larger and then have that be part of the closure. I might play with that in a minute and do something like that. But now that it's folded and the pocket is glued, again, you can always ink afterwards. It's just, a little harder to ink that pocket if you don't do it ahead of time. Okay, so that was one idea. And now that I've mentioned using one of the bookmarks this way, I kind of want to do that. So let's trim it up. Let's trim him up. So how tall is this? This is about five and a quarter. And of course, my old chopper doesn't is not that that big. <laughs> I'm going to, and I'll be able to use this that kind of looks um, 
It has this little label and the little, almost looks like little pieces of ephemera that I already collaged on there. I'm gonna chop those off. We can use them on something else because I wanted this not to be as tall as the cover. And I hope this also shows you, you know, uh, you don't have to make yours look exactly like mine. You really can change it up. So you'll we'll have two samples of what one of these little folders could look like um, using this kit, but obviously the options are endless. Now I like, I don't know, is endless, <laughs> is endless true? I don't know. I like seeing this other pattern here a little bit. So I am going to just glue, I'm gonna do my glue, it's probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch that I'll come over. So it's got plenty to hold on to, but you still get to see that nice pattern. And now, again, I think what would be really cute is to maybe just leave it and see if it, as it gets used to being folded, if it lays flat enough. But if I feel the need, I can always put some Velcro there later. Look how simple that was, and isn't it really pretty? I like it a lot. We could uh, come back and add something else if we wanted to, but I'm gonna set that aside for right now. So that was the folder idea. Um, let me show you real quick how to fold one of these not so square envelopes. I try, but um, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> even, even though you know you're doing it, um, the way you think is the right way. Sometimes it is hard. Um, okay, I don't have my big trimmer. So I am going to just start with a, I'm gonna just tear the paper. We're gonna do a four inch by four inch square. And I'm just using my grid here. One, two, three, four, to help me get this into the shape of a square. So you can, hand fold envelopes um, to have a pointy, um, what is that, flap, instead of maybe a straight flap. This one I did angle, I'll show you how to fold this one too. But um, if you start off with a square, you really can um, hypothetically <laughs> fold a square envelope. So let's try it. Um, I don't want my paper to be folded. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna just try to find the center point. So that's two inches. Well, it would help if I had some lead come down. I'm just marking where it is two inches and then I'm finding the center point. And so holding my ruler at two inches. So I know where these little lines intersect is the center of my paper. I don't know if you guys can see that. I normally would not make this so dark, but I'm trying to show you guys on camera. So just put a little dot or a really light pencil point for yourself, and then you can erase it. So I'm gonna bring this corner right up to that center point, all right? And then to fold it, I want to bring this one, and I'm overlapping it just a little, so this um, little pointy corner overlapped the center point just a touch. You can see that, okay? And then same thing from this side. The, the idea behind it is, is very, very simple, um, but mine always end up a little crooked. If anybody knows the trick to that, let me know. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad. And then this is going to be the flap that closes our envelope, and I want it to overhang a little bit. That's kind of a personal preference. You can figure out how you want yours to look. And then I like to fold it like this. Have that bottom flap up. If you want to ink before you glue, but I'm just gonna glue mine. I'm gonna add glue to these two sides. And you do wanna make sure you didn't glue your envelope closed. 
So I usually will stick something in there and just make sure it didn't seep out. Cute little envelope. See, and it's not a perfect square, but it's close enough and I'm okay with it. All right, and then on this one, I used one of the squares um, on one of the ephemera sheets. And I made, obviously, I started off with a bigger square of paper because that one is larger. But I'll do the same thing. We will just add some little birdies on there. And I even added then a little label I had laying on my desk. And I'm going to glue it down. I think it looks cute. A very easy project. And again, we can just add a quick Velcro dot to make that stay closed. All right, so I've been with the, I'm, I'm brand new, I say brand new, I've got a few kits out now, but you know, just kind of dipping my toe into the world of making digital papers. And I found it kind of easier for me anyway to design paper on color themes. So I've got, this is what I'm calling aqua blue, and I did the one before that was rosy pink. Now, the others, they all kind of stayed within a theme, even though I didn't really, I don't know that all of them did. But like I have Opal's favorite florals, and I have um, the summer elements that kind of had a, multiple colors in it but um I'm kind of having fun with the, the rosy pink and now the aqua blue I'm enjoying with all the different shades within a family so tell me what you guys think if you have ideas of, like I said I'm not very um experienced and I'm self-taught but if you have suggestions or ideas of things you'd like to see let me know doesn't mean I'll be able to execute but I'm certainly trying to learn so if there's something you are hoping to see I am going to try to make some fall papers and I am excited about that because fall is one of my favorite seasons. All right, large envelope. So this one, um, I started off with one of the full sheets of paper. And again, I think I told you guys once I trimmed the white border, it's almost, it's right in between 10 and a half and 10 and three quarters. So what is that? Um, one, two, three, four, ten and five eighths. All right, and then by eight. Now, once I did the folding, I ended up trimming it off some, and I'll show you why and what happened. Because, but it's still a really easy fold. So again, I am eyeballing the size of my envelope. I just kind of picked how deep it's going to be. I'll give you an idea. Eyeballing it, it's four and a quarter. And then this is going to be our flap to close it. I mean, how simple can that be, right? And again, I just eyeballed it. And it just looks like a nice large envelope. This one ended up being one and I think seven eighths, this flap. Now then I was like, well, but I want to angle. I want to angle the flap. So I did the... The strategy where you take it and um, I'm not creasing I'm just holding these two corners together and I started at the fold line here which I know you guys can't see here let me ink that so you can see it um, so that the two the two edges will match and I made a pretty deep cut and it works great, except then when you go to close it, you saw a whole bunch of white paper. We'll see if it happens this time too. There's a solution. One, you could go not as deep, I guess. Now they match, see? Or you can do what I'm gonna show you if this is if it happens again. Did that, and we fold over. And so see what I'm talking about? You end up with this little section here. But I really like that angle. So I just chopped it off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's still better to do it this way than to first cut your paper to seven and a quarter because then I think I'd still have the problem when I made the flap. So again, there might be an easier solution for this. I don't know. But what I'm going to do 
is just lay that on my paper trimmer and see now I have that nice edge and see how cute it looks. And um, so I'm just cutting off and I'm lining it up right where the white little triangle there intersects with the flap. I hope that made sense. I ended up cutting off about a quarter of an inch from both sides. And isn't it cute? So to me, that is super easy, an easy fold way to make an envelope. I know there's lots of ways to make envelopes. There's lots of ways to make them so you're not just gluing them closed like we're gonna do on this and take up some of our real estate in the envelope. Um, but that, requires a lot more scoring and folding and I just wanted a simple envelope today so I thought I'd share that with you so that's what I did I have not inked this one but we're going to go ahead and glue it because the glue is in my hand and I got ahead of myself but that's okay here I can really quick add a touch of ink right across the top all right so on one this big you do kind of want to make sure you smooth it out um, so you don't have it buckle on you. All right, so that was the folding of that envelope. And then all I did here was I did take the strip from the freebie and just made it um, into a little tuck spot and decorated it with the bird and put some, some lace ribbon on there. So this one I will decorate, but I'm going to think about how I want to decorate it before I get to that. But that's how you fold it. There's a library pocket. Why don't we do a library pocket? There, I have videos um, on how to make library pockets. And they're fun. And so this one I envision will be mounted in a journal, on a journal page, right? So this is my this is my idea book, even though this wasn't an idea book video. I would imagine putting it on a journal page. And then of course we have the large pocket. So I'd probably leave the side open. So if I put it on this side, I'd leave this side open. If I put it here, I'd leave this side open. And then you can add more things, more pieces of ephemera, right? And they'll be able to slide right in. So it, a very versatile thing or you can obviously just glue it down um you don't have to um make another pocket if you wanted to make this more of a standalone item it is cute it could go on um you, you could cover the back and it kind of instead of a card it would be a cute a cute little little card or gift. Um, you got to obviously put it on the front of a journal. I think it's cute enough. So, all right. So all this is, is two pieces of paper. And so we'll pick two pieces of paper from the kit that I have sitting here. And these are a bunch of those fussy cuts. So let's see. Um, well, that's the piece that I used before. So that will work. And we'll use, I don't really like that with it. Let's find, a, let's find a different one to go across. Maybe, maybe a strip of this. Um, and you just have to decide how deep you want your library pocket to be. I am going to make mine th three inches. So it's going to be right there by those little flowers. And again, I'm just using my ruler to tear because I don't want to get up and walk. I don't want to get up and walk over to my, um, to my trimmer. Now, you've got a couple of options here. You can, let's, I think there's another piece of this already cut too. Let me just see. Yeah, let's use this one that's already cut. Um, I think it's a little taller than my original pocket, and that's okay, too. This one is five inches tall, and this one's going to be five and a half. Totally fine. Um, you can, and it's by four inches, okay? So I can cut this piece of paper four and a half inches, and then score at a quarter of an inch, and then it... Um, a, you know, a quarter of an inch from this side, 
or I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it to four and a half. So I, I wanna have it wrap around. So you can lay it on the scoreboard and score it. The other thing you can do is center it fairly well, hold it really sturdy and just fold it over like this. <laughs> and then you're done. So that's how we're doing it today. We're going this super easy way. Um, and I did print this kit on 90 pound cardstock. Not super, it's like super heavy duty, but it's definitely not thin paper. So let's just do that. And then this one, I think I, um, it's, I, I made it a little bit wider because you can see my overlap is thicker. So if you want a little more wiggle room with yours, cut the paper, not four and a half, but um, five inches. Okay. And I am going to just miter the corners to make it look really neat from the front. So I'm just snipping off right from that score line to have those nice mitered corners. And I'm going to have this torn edge on the pocket, which I like. If you don't like that, put yours on your trimmer. Okay, and then we're going to glue it in. So it is going to be right here. Now you obviously need to glue the bottom, not just these two flaps. So lift it up, add some glue to the end of that and glue the back of your car, your library pocket down the bottom. Just making sure it's straight before I glue the flaps down and then you glue the flaps. This gives you a really nice roomy pocket using the flaps. Instead of cutting a piece of paper that is exactly four inches and then gluing on the sides, you lose a little bit of real estate if you do that. And this big jumbo tag might actually might not fit in there if we had done that, depending on how thick our glue was. All right, and then I used some of the birds, one of the fussy cuts. So let's see what I have already cut out, why don't we? Well, those three will be cute. And I, um, I'm gonna ink, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, I did this on these, I don't know if you can tell. I went ahead and really just kind of inked so that the white background wasn't quite so bright. So I'm just, I'm being careful. And this is the Walnut Stain, and this is in the Distress Oxide formula. A lot of times I use the regular, it's a little, I left it open. I think I told you guys that. It got a little dried out. And so, um, yeah, I have the re-inker and I need to, in fact, I may do that. When I get done filming, add some ink to the, the original formula ink pad so it'll be ready next time I'm ready to craft. But I like the distressed, the oxide too. There's different formulas. And this one, there's something you can do like you splatter water and different things on there. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Um, let's find, I'm gonna grab my doodad box and let's see if we have a strip of paper or something to kind of put under there. There's some words. Um, Again, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of um, going with the flow. I planned out some things. I was thinking I might just sit here and come up with even more projects and ideas. And then I thought, well, you guys might like to see how I made those. So, and it's been a long day. I've had, um, I've had a good day, but um, it is getting to be the end of the day. And I'm thinking about making dinner and spending some time um, 
with my husband and our pups and our daughter Julie is still um, home for the summer. She moves into college, back to college, I think in two weeks, so two weeks from now. So we um, let's spend some time with them this evening. All right, let me just ink these. And again, if you're just prepping like for other journals or to just have some things on hand, sometimes it's fun to not decorate everything um, because then you know, you could just have a bunch of library pockets, envelopes, those types of things on hand with papers that you like. But I'm having fun decorating today. All right, that's a little bit longer. I'm going to cut this. Let's see how it looks. Um, it was hanging off onto the birds. So hopefully I will like how this looks. Chopping it off. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do it like that and then put the birds. Yeah, I like that. All right, so first I'll glue these down. All right. So I need to do another little poll on my community tab on YouTube. I was so excited when I asked you guys about what were some of the things you'd like to see um, in our junk journal idea book we're making. Hopefully you're making it with me. And I think there were like 99 votes or something last time I looked. Crazy. You guys are awesome. So I may have to come up with another question to ask you um, to give me input because it was really helpful to know what you guys were hoping to see. It is interesting though as I start to work on those videos and share ideas that so many of them overlap. You know, they're not like these clear cut categories because I was like pockets and flips and um, page layouts and all of these things and then they all kind of run together. So I hope you guys understand that too. I'm doing my best, <laughs> but I think it's working out. Okay, so then um, the kit comes with, like I said, these bookmarks. I haven't made any bookmarks today, but um, I think there's three of the jumbo tags. So cute, right? And this one, I just glued it. It's some of that navy paper I told you guys about. It's like a, I don't know, some kind of cardstock. I got it at the um, craft secondhand store. Um, the consignment store where people just donate their supplies they're not going to use and you get to buy them fairly inexpensively and you can donate things you're not going to use and get like store credit. I love it. Um, it's called, the one here is Scrap RVA, but my daughter found it actually when she was living in Baltimore because there's one, a scrap in Baltimore, and we didn't even know about this one even though we've lived in this part of Virginia since she was in elementary school, but um, anyway, it's a fabulous store, and I have had this, and I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out. Um, of course, not that I'm always crafting with navy, but it is just such nice paper when I am ready or need something that's in the dark blue. So that's all I did to one, give these some more heft because they are quite a large tag, but um, they're really, they feel really good when they're backed on this paper. Um, but there's room here to add some words, some labels, you know, whatever you want. And um, I think on this one, yeah, I did set one of the big jumbo eyelets. I think for this one, I'm going to do something different. I'm not quite sure. Let me think about it for a second. I may try to see what what ribbon and things I have at hands, at hands link, that I can just reach without having to go across the room. This is some sorry silk ribbon. This ribbon is, um, what is this? A twill tape. So there's a really thick one, and then there's this medium, and then the one I'm using. I'm gonna see, I haven't used this much, what it looks like 
if I try to tie a bow that we just stick on the front. I want it to be too, too bulky. That's kind of what I get into whenever I start to think I'm going to use this, is it ends up really fat, you know? Even though I think that looks cute, it isn't going to lay very flat. Hmm. I wonder if I just did a piece like this. No. You know, if it was up higher, I think that would be okay. But the way I made the tag, I'm not sure I like having it down this low. But there is a fix to that. So what we're going to do, I said we would use this later. I am going to cut this little tag out of here. And of course, you could use another piece if you had it. And we're just gonna glue this down to kind of cover that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna staple a piece of this twill tape to it. So I think some of you guys know, and you've actually joined me from coming over from the Pink Monarch Prince YouTube channel because I've been working as a guest designer for them. Um, I don't know, I think since June, so a couple of months, I've been having a lot of fun. And, um, but I was showing, I was demonstrating how to do um, a little easy accordion flip thing and on a journal page. <laughs> and I used masking tape, but apparently, I think I said scotch tape. And so I've been getting comments, wait, you mean masking tape, right? You know, with a whole bunch of <laughs> question marks. Like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing. So yes, it was it was definitely masking tape. Not that you couldn't use scotch tape, but it, it would be clear. And I was talking about how much I just liked the natural color of the masking tape. But I, I don't know why I brought that up, except to say it is so easy to misspeak and not even realize it. Because, you know, I'm acting as if you guys are sitting here with me and are going to say something witty back. And, um, oh my gosh. So anyway, thank you to whoever that was that helped me um, clarify that. All right. So this one, again, was a little bit shorter. This one's a little bit taller. I think they both look great. Now, these are just tags. And again, I layered them. There's a whole page of these. Um, they don't have the birds. I fussy cutted the birds from that sheet, glued them on, added the button or the little bow. So we're not going to make tags today, but I just, um, again, put them on some of that navy blue paper so they're really nice and sturdy. So super cute. I'm really happy with those. I like these folders that I made. And the envelopes. So anyway, I hope you guys like these ideas. There's so many other things. I'm sure I'm going to make like a full-size journal using this kit, and then I may even use some of these pieces inside of it. I think that would be fun. But I love the birds, and I hope you guys do too. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you'll um, know when new, new videos come out. Um, so anyway, thank you. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you are too. And until next time, have a great day.